ready for our closing act. Sit <laughs> better, ladies and gentlemen. Fuck it, he's gonna rock it. Will you please welcome on this stage, go mad, go crazy for Gareth Woods! <laughs> Ratios between guys and girls are amazing. Okay, talking about ratios is fucking nerdy, but anyway. 
So anyway, I, I went to this boring dancing lesson and you know, I really hit it off with this one girl. We, every week we used to dance with each other and talk about like teenage stuff. So like back in the 90s it was like, Dawson's Creek and <laughs> the kind of phone card you had. And, you know, it's important shit, eh, man. You got the wrong Power Ranger. You just <laughs> not cute. You know? But we, we hit it off, but I never got to know her name. So I did the thing that most guys do. We're like, hey you. <laughs> How you doing? Which I now realize is the most obvious sign you don't know someone's name. But uh, back then I thought, fuck, I'm so a ninja. <laughs> so anyway, uh, you know, we started getting it off. And then one day I got an invite to her 16th birthday. You know, back in the days when you still got written invitations, not just like Facebook spam. Please come to my party. <laughs> Decline. <laughs> Words. Accept and don't pitch. <laughs> And so I, I get the invite to read, and you are cordially, still have no fucking clue what that means, but uh, you are cordially invited to my birthday. <laughs> Why don't people write invites in the third person anymore? What happens then? So anyway, I go to a party with a gift that just says, from Gareth. <laughs> so ninja. <laughs> and uh, I thought, okay, I'll read the, the birthday cake. That, that'll give me a clue. I go, happy birthday, sweetie. I'm like, that's probably not her name unless her parents are like weird hippies or something. <laughs> and everything was fine, you know, I was just kind of, you know, not really av avoiding anyone, you know. And I just say, hey, how are you doing? I don't have to mention her name. Until that freaking birthday song. That song is designed to find out who is just there for cake and who actually doesn't know whose his birthday is. Because you know how it The first line, everything's fine. Happy birthday to you. We're doing fine. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Still fine. Happy birthday. Dear Santa Tara. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. It's not your birthday when you chance to be like planetary alarm kind of clever. I think the only place more awkward to forget someone's name would be like while you're having sex with them. And, and they, they do that like, Say my name! <laughs> Say my name! <laughs> Man, don't judge, you don't know me. You don't know me. <laughs> Anyway, you do your thing and they're like, say my name. And you're like, hey you. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm fine, thanks to you. Yeah, I'm still fine. Don't do that, But uh, yeah, so it's New Year's and you guys enjoy the fireworks and the explosions in the sky and it's cool. A lot of people don't, they don't enjoy fireworks because they're like, oh, the puppies. Oh, the puppies. Every year it's the same thing. The puppies, they're so terrified. Uh, hello, it only have, happens every seven years for dogs. You know, they go, oh, New Year's, is it seven years past already? Wow! <laughs> Time really flies. <laughs> That's because dogs age seven. <laughs> what I don't understand is how people, they, they've got like a bias towards certain animals. You know, like we love some animals. Like, Oh man, they can like shut out on our couch and they can eat our shoes and always oh, love them so much. But, but some animals fucking hate. You know, like we could find out that snake venom cures cancer and we'd still be like, oh fuck, it's a snake, kill it! Burn it, kill it, bury it, dig it up and again and kill it! <laughs> Sorry, I lost a bit of composure there. <laughs> some animals, we just hate them. Whoever's doing the PR, the public relations for animals, is doing a really biased job. We love some animals and we hate others. Take the hippo, for example, right? We all love hippos. <laughs> oh, hungry, hungry hippo. Oh, give the hippo a chomp. Oh. <laughs> Do you know that more people are killed by crocodiles, by hippos, every year than crocodiles? And yet we love hippos and hate crocs, mostly because of their shitty shoes. But, uh... <laughs> we all love hippos except for that stupid animated one that tries to sell us insurance. You know, that one. <laughs> Example number one. Example number two, bees. Bees, little stripy suicide bombers if you ask me. But if you go in any children's book, oh, there's these little bees. Oh, they're so happy and industrious. Oh, they're, so they're more like zombie terrorists controlled by an evil queen. But no one tells you that part, man. More people are killed by bees every year than sharks. And then everyone loves bees and hates sharks because they're evil. Huh? It's not fair, really. Mosquitoes are another example. Because mosquitoes are fucking evil. And they deserve to go back to hell. <laughs> and it's not even the vampires that like the blood sucking thing that gets me. It's the... It's the... Yeah. It's that fucking annoying... Yeah. I would quite happily put 
put like an IV drip, like a, a blood bag next to my bed going, free blood, just shut the fuck up about it. <laughs> Bullies, you know, like not only gonna steal your lunch money, but I'm gonna tease you about it. <laughs> and then they do that thing where they land on your forehead, and you're like, oh man, chance for vengeance. <laughs> Stop hitting yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand why some animals are good and some are evil. You know, like, uh, let's go. Uh, lions, good, right? Okay. Sharks, evil. evil. Yeah, exactly. Uh, spiders, evil. evil. Elephants, good, good exactly. That's fucking bullshit. A lion can come in here right now and rip someone's face off. And now I was going to go, oh, look how cute he is mauling that chick. <laughs> oh, it thinks it's people. <laughs> That's bullshit because, you know, a lion lives where you live, on the land. A lion can come in here right now and there's nothing you can do about it. Whereas a shark is pretty easy to avoid. Just don't go in any form of water. Don't even take a deep bath and you'll be pretty safe <laughs> from sharks. Until some sort of tornado pulls them out of the water and throws them at us in some sort of shock NATO. <laughs> like that will never happen. <laughs> oh man. I understand our whole good and evil thing, man. That's, is there a committee that decides who's good and evil? You know, and they sit going through checklists. Uh, what does this one do, Bob? Uh, this one takes grass and turns it into milkshake and steak. Hmm. I do like steak and I hate mowing the lawn, so let's put that on the good part, okay? What does this one do? Uh, it has poison which it uses to sting and paralyze its enemies. Let's put that on the evil part, why don't we, you know? Do they count the legs, maybe? I think that's, that's a sign of evilness, you know? How many legs does this one have? One, two, three, four, that's pretty good. Five, six, mm, could be evil. Seven, eight, eight is fucking evil! Eight is evil! Sorry, Mr. Octopus, you seem kind of cool, but if you've got eight legs, you're fucking good. Just saying. And the rhino? We spoke about the rhino, we were shot, spoke about the rhino earlier. We were all like, you know, tears because the rhino's dying. Oh no, our beloved rhino. So we've got to stop the Chinese poachers by buying one of those red horns, you know, they're all made in China anyway. <laughs> Everyone's like, up in arms because the rhino's dying. But if we found out that tomorrow we are this close to killing the lost, like giant spider snake monster thing, no one would give a fuck. In fact, they probably give them money to support the cause of killing the last one. Like, hey everyone, buy a red club and come beat the shit out of the last one, you know? <laughs> no one's putting red spider legs on their cars going, Save the spiders! Two, four, six, eight, save the spiders, they are great! That was a shit shot, by the way. It's because I'm white. Uh, uh, we're not that good at, at protesting. I'll be, the, I'll be the first to admit, we're not good at that. Uh, black people on the hand, man, you guys are good at that shit. When you guys protest, shit goes down! Well, taking your shit goes everywhere, but like... <laughs> you guys know what to do, man. White people, man. I think of some of the protests that we had in 2013, some white guy protests, you know? Uh, remember Hummingbird Gate? Ooh. You don't remember Hummingbird Gate? It was such a big deal! That's where Woolworths stole this picture of a hummingbird and put on their pillows. And you know what? They stole the picture from a young designer. But then it turns out that the designer had stolen that image from a nature photography book. The plot thickens. But then it turns out that the nature photographer guy had stole the image from God. And no one is asking the important question, who the fuck cares? And why are we putting hummingbirds on our pillows in the first place? That was a big deal for white people, so we protested always for that. You guys obviously remember, we went to the rally. And, okay. The other one we protested was, uh, oh, it was uh, Black Tuesday, Wednesday, Black something. Oh, it was Black Tuesday. Yeah, remember? That's how cool it was to me. Black Tuesday, when they were trying to sign the secrecy bill. Yeah, so all the white people rallied together. No, we didn't. We went on Facebook and changed our profile picture to a black square. <laughs> Fuck you, Zuma. <laughs> Block your Facebook friend request. <laughs> like that did anything. And then, like a big scandal in white people's lives. Do you know what we did? It was Woolworths not hiring white people anymore. <gasps> oh no, now I'm never going to fulfill my dream of being a bag lady. <laughs> and I practiced all day to say, oh, do you have a Woolworths or my school car? <laughs> Wasted! <laughs> but you know how we protested? Of course you do, because we all went to the rally, the meeting, the secret meeting, that white people have a lot. 
one secret meeting. <laughs> Let's nudge went quick. We decided to fill up trolleys with everything we could find at all. Little dainty meats, you know, little small miniature cheeses. You got to have those shrimp chips, you know, the one where you have like two and next thing you can eat the whole bag. <laughs> Just covered in crumbs and regrets. You know? <laughs> and you got to have chuckles. You got to have chuckles, yeah. You know what we did? We just left the trolley there. Ah, fuck you, always. You can just pack that shit away yourself. Ah. <laughs> well, Tim is a little bit. Um. But you know, some guy just arrived later going, oh man, month end, I do not have time to buy an entire month's worth of groceries all in one trolley. Who is you think of everything? <laughs> Which is why we still shop at Woolworths. <laughs> What is the point? Oh yeah, white people are bad at protesting. Now I was talking about animals and how unfairly we treat certain animals like. I mean, here's an example, right? So um, it's your birthday. It's your birthday. Happy birthday again, my life. And uh, you come home and you open up the front door and you realize, oh, you left the birthday cake on the kitchen table. And what's happened? The entire kitchen is now swarming with ants. Literally infested with ants. So what do you do? You do what anyone would do. First you blame someone else for leaving the cake out, even though it was you. And then <laughs> you get the doom and you spray the little buggers to kingdom come. Get it, buggers, because they're bugs. That's a fucking brilliant joke. Right? <laughs> now imagine instead a year passes. That's time. It's now your 22nd birthday. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. <man. laughs> anyway, it's your 22nd birthday. You carry your age very well, even though you, you're aging by the fucking. <laughs> your 22nd birthday, you open up the door and you realize, oh no, I left the cake on the kitchen table again, just like last year, and uh, now the entire kitchen is swarming in puppies. Do you still get the doom? Of course not. You've got a kitchen full of cake and puppies. You put a sign saying shoe sale out there and you've got the biggest chip magnet the world has ever seen. <laughs> you've got like the puppies to attract the hot ones and the cake to distract the fat ones and like, <laughs> genius. But it's a democracy, that's what I'm trying to say. It's not fair how we treat certain animals. You know? And don't even get me started on which animals we love and which ones we love to eat. You know, it's oh, Lassie, you're so beautiful. I can't believe Asians eat dogs. It's so gross. Ew. Oh, it's Babe the Pig. Oh, he's so cute and fucking delicious. <laughs> it's bullshit. It's bullshit. I want to know how we analyze these animals. Do, do they, they watch children's movies, I think? That's one way you can find out, you know? Depending on what movie you watch, you decide if an animal is evil or not. You know, like, okay, lions, according to Lion King, would be good, of course, okay? Now, what about hyenas? They would be bad, according to Lion King, right? Here's a trick one. Electric eels. Now, you see, no, no, it's a trick. It's a trick, it's a trick. Don't answer too soon. Don't answer too soon. Because if you watch the Flintstones, of course, then you know they're good because that's how human beings discovered electricity. Um, hashtag knowledge. <laughs> But, if you watch Little Mermaid, then you know that they were that sea bitches like henchmen, so then they're evil, so kind of on the maybe part, Bob. So, uh, it's How about this one? This animal can create poison, lives on the land, the sea, and the air, has killed more humans than any other animal on the planet, and has been known to abandon its young at birth. Do you know what it is? Shut up! I was suspense, but yes, it's humans. There you go. Surprise! <laughs> humans. Okay, bye, bye, bye. <laughs> Surprise! It's humans, it's you! So, uh, I guess the point is, uh, you're evil, and, you, and we should eat each other. <laughs> I think that was the point of the story. I'm, I'm not actually sure. Anyway. You guys having a good time still? 2017 was a good year. Was it generally a good year? I don't know, I had a good time. It was a good time for me. I learned a couple of things in 2013. I learned no matter what you do, no matter how tough your job is, you, you can quit. You can quit. <laughs> if the Pope can quit his job, then you can quit. Because I mean, he was oppressed, man. Working that little cubicle with the shitty coffee and the crap boss and the... No, he wouldn't. He lived in a palace. You know, all the little boys he... Never mind. <laughs> I'm not going to finish that sentence. But he quit. He just quit his job, you know. And I think I found the reason. He, he was the first Pope on Twitter. And I think you can only take so much spam from Justin Bieber fans and those little eggs that try to sell your iPads before you, you know, just quit or climb a clock tower with a rifle. But, uh, he quits, yeah. And I think the other reason he quits is because I think half the world doesn't even believe his, his 
boss exists. And that must be kind of awkward. Because you know? I've worked in that, like an office kind of environment and I got a lot of work done by other people by telling them that my boss told them to do it. You know, I go like, uh, Mr. Stevens from accounting says you need to do this. And so they just do it because they're all scared of Mr. Stevens from accounts, even though they've never seen him. You know, they just see his office and says, Mr. Stevens. <laughs> Only I can speak to Mr. Stevens. <laughs> That's how it works, you see. But if, if I did the same thing and I said, oh, Mr. Stevens says you must do this, I don't believe in Mr. Stevens. <laughs> what do you mean you don't believe in Mr. Stevens? I, I've never seen him. I've never seen Mr. Stevens. I don't believe he exists. But you, you have to do this. He said you have to do this, otherwise you're going to get fired. They always say you're going to get fired if you don't listen to him, but I've never actually seen anyone get fired, you know? But if you do what he says, you'll, you'll get a promotion. Once again, I've never actually seen anyone get promoted. So that was like an allergy for God. Um, <laughs> um, too soon? Too close to Sunday? Um, I, think, I think the hardest thing must have been to quit. It's like, could you, could you quit too? You know what I mean? Like, as a comedian, I can't phone Trevor Noah and go like, oh, listen, I'm, I'm out. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have a boss. Who does the Pope present to? You know, you know, dear God, um, thanks, but uh, I'm done. Uh, you can take this job and shut it. Love, Pope. <laughs> Mister. Who, who does he resign to? And, and imagine he left to go to like a competitor, you know, like, like the Jews, or like Scientologists, or something. Or like a real religion. Uh, that'd be weird, because I can't imagine like the HR director for the church is like, no, no, we'll counter offer, we'll, um, okay, okay, we'll, we'll double your salary, uh, more boys, uh, no, never mind, um, and uh, an upgrade, a new parking spot for the Pope Mobile, and you can change your name to Super Pope, uh, Jesus 2.0. Uh, he goes in. But he quit, that's a lesson I learned, you can just give up, that's brilliant. Other thing I learned from 2013 is, uh, if your girlfriend gives you socks for Valentine's Day, you can fucking shoot her. <laughs> Thank you, Oscar, for that. <laughs> Bitches was not, I'm sorry. <laughs> now, I learned quite a bit from the Oscar Pistorius thing. Um, first of all, even though that guy's got no legs, the motherfucker is armed. <laughs> In the same week that he was arrested, you know that his brother was arrested as well for culpable homicide? Hectic, eh? In the same week. Turns out Oscar's not the only thing that runs in the family. <laughs> My favorite thing about the Oscar thing was when, when they took him away, you know, when they had his house and they take him away, but they, they obviously cover his face so the paparazzi can't take photos. Of who is the guy in the metal shoes with his cape? <laughs> who could it be, Clippity Clop? <laughs> was a good year for me. I moved, I moved to Cape Town. Yeah. Fine, well, fuck you guys. I moved to Cape Town. I'm not moving out. Like, I'm a refugee, baby. No, Cape Town's been good to me. Like, my first month here, geez, I did everything I could. I uh, went to Table Mountain. I went to Robben Island. Like a real Cape Townian, I got drunk in the gay club. That's a joke, people. This is a comedy club. I've, I've never actually been to Table Mountain. But I did go to this really dodgy gay club in this really dodgy part of town. I wasn't sure what I was more scared of, uh, getting my shit stolen and pushed in. <laughs> I'm just singing guys a song here. Comedy and rock and roll in one night? <laughs> Deal. <laughs> Cape Town and who knows, maybe you've experienced the same things and you can 
cheer and throw panties at me. You see, I've been to Constantia, and I've been to Camps Bay, where everything's so fucking expensive, even to breathe you gotta pay. And everyone here is an actor or a budding movie star. But in the daytime, make their money by guarding people's cars. <laughs> and I've been to Kyalicha and some place I can't pronounce, where I bought some special uh, medicine that I get there by the house. And while I was there, I did my shopping at the local spaza just to realize this is where all our stolen cars are. Because it's the O2 one. Yo to one, we've got chicks and jocks and well the in between. And don't forget the mountain. Schwa mountain. <laughs> and the sea, the, be the beaches here are beautiful, man. They'll take away your breath. Just don't go in the water unless you want to freeze to death. <laughs> and I've been to Century City and Rotanga Junction, where half the rides will kill you, and well the other half don't function. <laughs> And there's always a party in Long Street, man, especially after dark. And I'd probably actually go to one if there were any fucking places left to park. Cause it's the O2-1, it's the O2-1. In winter it's so fucking cold you can say goodbye to the sun. And even though it's cold here and the winter can be a killer, no one really gives a shit, well unless they're throwing theirs at Zilla. <laughs> And I went to Paro once, you know, just to see what's up. And I said, hello to someone! And they said, boy, I'll fuck you up! <laughs> Seems Paro is just as rough as I have been told. But I wasn't expecting being sworn at by a five-year-old. <laughs> but then I saw a young lady who had grown a small goatee. So it was clear to me that she was from Observatory. <laughs> Despite my fears, I said hello, but this made her boyfriend mad. So he French kissed her and he squeezed her ass. And she said, I love you, Dad. Because <laughs> it's the O2-1. It's the O2-1. They've got great Gatsby's in Mitchell's plane, but uh, you better bring a gun. <laughs> and every time I go to sleep at night, I'm so thankful I'm alive. No one in this fucking town knows how to drive. <laughs> Thank you very much. You guys enjoy that? Yeah. Enjoy the lyrics. I think that's what I'm asking. Enjoy the lyrics. The music's quite simple, kind of basic. I'm a bit of a shit guitarist. You know? Thanks, Mom, for the guitar lessons. But, uh... It's the lyrics, it's the important part, because you know, I've got this little vendetta, that's uh, a big word, it means uh, shitstorm over things I don't like, whatever. But um, about lyrical content, because we've given up, we really have. I'm going to write a song, in fact, with you guys. We're all going to write a song that's going to make me famous. It already exists, okay, so that's kind of cheating, but it's got three and a half million hits on YouTube, and we're going to write it right now, okay? So I'm going to split the audience like over here, cool. You guys on the beat, so I'm going to hold the beat like this, and you guys are just going to go. Eh, 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 eh. You got it, right? You got it. Let's practice. Yeah, you got it, sweet. Okay, now you guys are tough back to follow, right? It's a little bit harder. It's ah, 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 ah. You got it, right? It's three, two, one, let's go. Come on at the back, come on, motherfuckers. Let's go. Three, two, one. Ah, 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 ah. Half million hits, please. Thank you. This is my money and my models and shit. Uh, it's bullshit, though. The lyrical content. What the fuck says? <laughs> money, please. The fish goes gloop. What the, what the fuck? It certainly does not. And I, I noticed this downward trend in lyrical content. Wow, this is going to make you feel old. 21 years ago, when a certain song by the Spice Girls came out called Wannabe. Yes, it makes you feel all right. You weren't even born yet. <laughs> Happy 23rd birthday. 
<laughs> no, but the song, seriously, do you remember the lyrics? If you want to be my lover, you gotta get with my friends. That is a shit lyric. <laughs> How is that a stipulation to dating someone? If you want to fuck me first, you gotta fuck my friend. <laughs> what guy's gonna say no to that? Seriously. <laughs> okay, sure, one of them was a ginger, so it's like a little bit of fear factor thing going on there. You can fuck the ginger or eat the monkey brains. Like, oh, so. I think it's worse because in the chorus it goes like, I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want. Okay, yeah, so uh, tell me what you want, what you really, really want. Oh, I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want. Yeah, you keep saying that, but will you tell me what you want, what you really, really want. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna really, really, really want a zig a zigar. <laughs> unsolvable mysteries in music that have occurred in my lifetime. Number one, who let the dogs out? And number two, what the fuck is a zigga zigga? But bad lyrics, man, it's not, it's not isolated just to the 90s and to, um, to the Spice Girls. Remember Sade or Shade or Sade or whatever the fuck she wants to pronounce the name? Silent H's on our thing. Yeah. Remember the song Smooth Operator or Smooth Operator or how the fuck she wants to pronounce that either? Smooth Operator. Like guys love this, like the only way we get laid. Smooth Operator. Great song, except for that damn lyric that goes Coast to Coast, LA to Chicago. <laughs> Yeah, I trust the guys laughing actually have done geography because Chicago is nowhere near the coast. It's like, coast to coast, Cape Town to Velcom. Velcom, baby, see you. Chardet, jeez, get an atlas or atlas or whatever. <laughs> Remember Desiree Life? Life, all life, all life. And the plane goes past all the butterflies. Beautiful. Except that fucking lyric about I'm afraid of the dark, especially when I'm in a park and there's no one else around. Ooh, I get the shivers. I don't want to see a ghost. It's the sight that I fear most. I'd rather have a piece of toast. <laughs> What's the evening news? Oh, she has so much money because of that song. <laughs> and it's because she bought a rhyming dictionary for Christmas. It's like, this will be an investment. Let's see, uh, ghost, uh, host, uh, spadrost, uh, uh, and then, uh, Achilles from Ignition, remember that? It's the remix to Ignition, hot and fresh out the kitchen. Like, I'm gonna stop making this, I like, feel really what? <laughs> Great song, until that damn verse. Can I get a beep beep? Sorry, can I get a toot toot? Can I get a beep? Is that written for Thomas the Tank Engine and the uh, fucking Transformers? Or the <laughs> Autobots Assemble! Time to party down! <laughs> and it gets worse because then the one verse goes, uh, And it's like murder she wrote when I get you out the clothes. What? <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? Did he just confess to murdering someone in a song? Or even more disturbing that he has a hard on for Angela Lansbury from Murder She Wrote? <laughs> Repeat offender on the worst lyrics of all time list, Will I Am and the Black Eyed Peas. But the one I'm going to reference tonight is My Humps. You remember that one? My Humps, My Humps, My Humps, My Humps. I thought it was a song promoting breast cancer awareness and checking for lady lumps, but it's not. It's just a song about tits and ass, which uh, well, usually wouldn't have a problem with. It's simple, in fact, in the damn bridge when he starts throwing in recipes breakfast series? Like, I mix my milk with your cocoa puffs. Milky, milky cocoa. I mix my milk with your cocoa puffs. Brown. Like, what? <laughs> At least, fuck, give us a lasagna recipe or something. <laughs> mix the eggs with the beef sauce. <laughs> Who needed advice on how to make cocoa puffs? Like, oh shit, to use milk, I was using water and hope. <laughs> Oh, I'm just singing you guys one more song, then we can go, okay? Then you guys can go back. Woo! Woo! What the fuck, guys? <laughs> Thanks for staying. <laughs> so, uh, I write quite a few love songs now, because, uh, <laughs> 
think of Archie quite a lot, I mean, besides movies and music and sex, with other women, of course, and my friends and my career. Wait, what chord comes next? Oh, yeah, G major, I think about that chord. And I'm glad the pro teams are playing well again, because, I mean, we were world number one and then we lost to Sri Lanka. Like, ooh, yeah, yeah, Sri Lanka, the mighty Sri Lanka. It's like, I don't even think half the Sri Lanka team actually plays professional cricket. I think most of them still grow tea for a bit. That's not racist, because I'm only thinking and I'm not saying it out loud in a public forum or anything. That would be awkward. <laughs> and Hashimama, like I never see that guy eat. I'm sure he has food in that beard of his, because like <laughs> I can't keep food out of mine, and his is way, way more hectic than mine. And I can't imagine all the canteens they play at our Hindu halal. So he's got to have like a roti or a samosa or something in there. Like. So I think about that quite a bit. That occupies quite a bit of my day. <laughs> and that whole Libyan situation, like oh, they should go down in Libya. No wait, now they should go down Egypt. Forget about Libya. What about Libya? Look, I don't actually care about Libya. I'm never gonna, gonna go to Libya. It's just uh, you never know when it's Friday night. You gotta pay tribute to suited Bulls house because we yeah, that's a fun way to spend Friday nights. And Bulls are like, yeah, yeah, geography question. I got an A for geography matric and you didn't. I didn't even do geography matric. <laughs> Bulls are dickhead, by the way. Don't tell him I sent for that. By the way. Question comes up and you, fuck, you just want to go home and have a wank or something. <laughs> Think about Hashimoto. <laughs> Not while wanking, I mean, like that. <laughs> and the question's about Libya and what his name is this month, and you don't care. But I think about you quite a lot, so that's going to come for something. Because the realistic kind of love song, the realistic kind of love, why must everything? When our love could be pragmatic. <laughs> You're laughing, but you have no fucking clue what it Sorry. Um, okay, pragmatic it means to not be subjective or personal when taking any information, but to be objective and historical. <laughs> Hashtag education. <laughs> Sorry, I just realized how condescending that sounds. Sorry, condescending is a big word. <laughs> it actually means to talk down to people. We've got some crayons upstairs. I'd like to draw a pretty picture. Like, now I sound like a pedophile. <laughs> Sorry, pedophile is a big word. Realistic and love song. Realistic and love. No thrills, no fuss, no mystery. But it doesn't mean there's no chemistry. You don't need a dream guy. I don't get the fuss. At least I put the seat down when I flush. Mostly. And I'll always put the cap back on the toothpaste tube. And I promise that I'm always gonna shave my pu I mean, uh, legs. Realistic. I've been Gareth Woods. You guys have been great. Welcome back.